Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Worship You service today. As we begin our time of worship together, we open by singing together, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to encourage you to worship as you feel comfortable today, friends. Let us praise God. Good morning, friends, and welcome to this, our worship e-service today. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we gather together and worship of God as brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome. Friends, I want to encourage you to participate in our service today as you feel comfortable. Welcome. And if friends, if you're new and this is your first time joining us, my name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahale Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to invite you to participate in this uh, worship e-service as you feel comfortable. Welcome. Friends, as we gather as a community of Christ and in faith, we, we light a candle as a reminder that Christ is with us. That the light of Christ shines into the world and the situations in which we, we find ourselves at this moment. Now, if you have a candle nearby and you want to light it with me, I want to invite you to do so safely as we light our candles together. As we light our candles, we're reminded that the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our world. Though the world has not understood it, and darkness is trying to overcome it, it has never succeeded and it never will. It's a reminder that, that as we gather in community with another, one another, Christ is with us. And where we are becomes a sanctuary because God is with us there as well. So friends, as we come in this moment as well, we, we come opening our service with prayer. And I want to invite you to, to lift up your prayers to God as we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to open a time of prayer. And I'm going to invite you to lift up whatever prayers are heavy upon your heart at this time. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we come to you this morning in this time of worship. As we come and begin our worship, we, we lift up our prayers and we thank you that we can gather. And, and that as we do, Father, you are with us. 
that you are worthy of all praise, honor, and thanks. As we come in this moment, we, we lift up our lives and all of who we are to you. We come as we are, Father, as your children. And we come lifting up these our prayers. Friends, I want to invite you to lift up your prayers to God in this moment, whatever they may be. Lift them up. Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers. That as we lift them up, you, you answer them according to your will and your purpose. As we ask for forgiveness, Father, you forgive us our sins. As we, we thank you that, Father, you are continually active in our lives. As we lift our prayers for others, that, that you know those circumstances. And praise for ourselves, you, you are present in those spaces, Almighty God. So we thank you that you are with us. And that you continue to journey with us in this moment in time. is a marvelous and wonderful thing. So, Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers. For we ask this name all in Jesus' holy and precious name, but now and always. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying, and also with you, Raymond. Friends, I'd like to ask you on our, on our WhatsApp chat groups, as well as on our Facebook pages and in the chat function there, as well as on the, the, fun, the chat function on our YouTube page, if you're joining us there, or in the description of our video. Simply share the peace of the Lord as we come and we, we gather together in community with one another. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And as we share that, we, we also committing ourselves to be peacemakers in the spaces and places we find ourselves as the children of God. Those who are being brought into the image and continue to strive for the image of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we come together in community with one another, we pray our community prayer, which is the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to be praying in English, and I want to invite you to pray in whichever language is easiest upon your tongue. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we continue to worship this morning in this, our worship e-service, we come and we sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Let us lift up our voices in worship of God, friends.
Friends, as we continue to worship God in this uh, worship e-service today, we also come as a people of prayer. We come bringing the world that surrounds us, our families, our friends and our communities to God in a moment of prayer as well. So friends, I'm going to get us going in a time of prayer and I'm just going to invite you to, to lift up your prayers of intercession as we pray for others in this time. So let us pray to God and lift up our world to God in prayer. Let's pray. So, Father, we come to you in this moment and we thank you that you are with us. As we worship you, that we encounter you, almighty God. But we don't come by ourselves. We come bringing the world with us into the space of worship with it as well. We come bringing our families, our friends, our communities, all the spheres of life in which we interact with others. We come bringing to you, them to you, almighty God, as we, we lift up these who need a touch from you and your intervention in those spaces. So, friends, I want to invite you in this moment of prayer to lift up your prayers of intercession as we pray for others. Lift up your prayers, friends. We lift up those, Father, who are suffering and grieving at this moment in time. That you would comfort them. Those struggling with COVID-19 or other ailments, that you would be with them as well. And those in the medical field, the mighty God. We lift up and continue to pray for our youth, as well as women at this month, as this August is Women's Month as well. And Father, we thank you that you hear all of these our prayers as we lift them up, as we lift others up to you in prayer. That you know the complexity and the intricacy of each situation. And that, Father, you know the number of hair upon their heads, and so much is your love for those people that we've lifted up to you. And friends, I want to invite you in this moment of prayer as well, just to, to lift up prayers. Perhaps there are things that you need from God. Perhaps prayers that you'd like to lift up. Lift those, up those prayers now to God. Father, we thank you that you hear these our prayers. You know, you know, we know that you love us so much. We just thank you that you're a God who answers prayers, both for others and for ourselves. So, Father, we thank you that you hear each and every one of our prayers today as we've lifted them up to you and that you answer them according to your will and your purpose. For we ask this all in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. Friends, our notices today are found within the description of this video and have also been made available on our WhatsApp info groups as well as on our Facebook pages as well. I'd like to encourage you to read through our notices so that you're aware of what's taking place in our communities of faith at this time. There are two that I'd like to highlight for your attention today. The first being that we have resumed all of our in-person worship services at Krugersdorp, Princess and Nertyville Methodist Churches. And we look forward to joining with you in our English services as we gather together at 7.45 at Krugersdorp Methodist Church, 9 a.m. at Princess Methodist Church, and 9.30 a.m. at Nertyville Methodist Church every Sunday while we can. Just a reminder that if you're not quite ready, and it's okay if you're not quite ready to, to join us for our in-person worship services, just a reminder that we will be making our e-services available every Sunday as well. We have our 8 a.m. sermony service 
our 9 a.m. worship service, and every second week we have our 8.30 children's lesson that is made available as well. The links to join our e-services are made available through our Facebook pages, as well as on our WhatsApp info groups, and are also found within our notices. So you're more than welcome to, to click on those links and to enjoy our e-services today as well. Just a reminder that as we resume our in-person worship services, we will be strictly adhering to all of our COVID-19 protocols, which means that we're going to be wearing our face masks as we gather to protect each other from ourselves as a sign of love for one another. As we arrive at our church sites, we will be screened, we'll have our temperatures taken and we'll do the contact tracing registers. We're going to be doing sanitizing and obviously physical social distancing as well. Please note that, that a max attendance of 50 at all of our church sites as per government mandate at this time. Friends, I want to request that we play our part in curbing the spread of the coronavirus. And we do this obviously by, by protecting others from ourselves, by wearing our mask, sanitizing, and also getting vaccinated as well. I also ask that should you not be feeling well on the day of or the week leading up to our in-person service, or are displaying COVID-19 related symptoms, or having been in direct contact with someone who's tested COVID positive in the past two weeks, we'd rather invite you to join us for our online e-services. And then once you've completed the required self-isolating or feel well again, we look forward to you joining in, uh, with us in worship in person as well. It's simply as a sign of love for each other to keep each other safe during this time. The second notice from my side is that our church telephone lines are now working. So you're more than welcome to get us on 011-660-1296 or 011-556-1938. You're also more than welcome to use that 081 number as an alternative church line as well. That's 081 5830394. Please note that our office hours, and this obviously applies to the numbers I've just given now, are Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 until 1. Outside of those hours, uh, or for pastoral care needs, please do contact me, Reverend Raymond Keat, and my contact number is 084-701-8129. Friends, I want to, to commend the rest of our notices to your reading, so you're aware of what's taking place in our community of faith at this time. Friends, I'd like to thank those who give of their tithes and offerings at this time. Thank you. Friends, as you give of your tithes and offerings, we as a church receive it and we use it for the furtherment of God's kingdom. Through sustaining the work of our church, both in person and, uh, and online as well, to meet the needs and the costs related to ministry, as well as a mission as we reach out to the communities that surround us as well. So friends, thank you to you for your generous and continued giving in support of our church communities. If you're joining us today, friends, and you're not from one of our communities of faith, welcome. It's good that you're here. We want to encourage you, if you're part of a community of faith, to give into your community of faith. Because we need as many of our members to give into our community of faith to sustain our ministry and work as your community does as well. You're more than welcome to give into our community of faith. And we'll gladly receive your tithes and offerings as well. Our banking details for those who, who need them are found within notices as well. We have Krugersdorp, Nuitiaville and Princess, the three English services in the Mahali circuit. And our banking details are found there as well. Friends, with that said, we're going to commit our giving to God in prayer. And obviously that God would bind us together as a community faith. So let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we, we thank you that you have given us so much. That your love has extended in the situations, even when we, we haven't felt it, we know you are with us. And you continue to journey with us in the spaces and places we find ourselves. And we thank you for that love. And out of, as a response to that love, Father, we give of our tithes and our offerings back to you as a love gift for you, Almighty God. And we ask that you'd receive it from grateful and thankful hearts. We thank you that you bless those who give as well. And that we, you continue to guide us in, in our giving and our journey and in being answers to prayer for the furtherment of your kingdom as well. We pray, Father, that you give those who administer these your gifts wisdom, guiding and directing, as they seek to use it to meet the needs that need to be met, so to sustain our ministry at this difficult time, but also to reach out to bring hope, healing and transformation through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. We ask this all in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. 
Friends, as we continue to worship today, we we come and we sing together indescribable as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God today. Let us worship God, friends. Friends, as we come to the Word of God today, we have one reading. And our reading today is from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20. Now, if you have a Bible nearby, I'd like to encourage you to open your Bible and to follow with me as we read the Word of God together today. I'm also going to put the words on the screen. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20, from the message paraphrase of the Holy Bible. And it reads as follows from verse 10. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that you'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle. On your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. 
And don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time. Telling the mystery to one and all. The message that I, jailbird preacher that I am, am responsible for getting out. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to your word today and we, we ask that you'd open our eyes, our hearts and our lives to your leading and your directing. That we may be able to, to hear what it is you're saying to us through this Holy Scripture and a reflection thereon. And that you'd be able to enable us to apply it into our lives as we receive it into our hearts. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, as we come and we gather around the word of God, I want to ask you, why did you choose to wear the clothes you did today? I want you to stop for a minute and think about that. Why did you choose to wear the clothes that you're currently wearing today? Perhaps you, you're you joining us through our e-service today and you, you may be at home and, and dressed in, in regular going out clothes. Perhaps you have special clothes that, that you wear when you stay in at home. Or perhaps you're joining us and you're in your pajamas still. Perhaps you, you've been out and you, you're catching us in the evening. Whenever you're watching this. Perhaps just stop and examine, why are you wearing the clothes that you're wearing today? Perhaps it's warm or cold. Perhaps you're doing a, a special activity of some sort or another. Friends, the reality is that we're not going to wear our, our Sunday best or our bull gowns or our tuxedos to do gardening, are we? I mean, just stop and perhaps think about that for a minute. A bull gown or a, or a tuxedo, we normally wear those when we go to a gala event black tie event or, or some other fancy function. It's not something that we're going to mess up while digging in the garden and, and perhaps rip as we, we cut trees. But on the other side of that as well, we're not going to wear those tatty clothes that we use for gardening when we go to a tuxedo event or a ball gown event. When we go to, to one of these gala events or a fancy function, we're going to dress up in that space. The same is, come, happens when we come to sports as well. We, we don't wear the wrong clothing when it comes to different sports because we know that we're going to hurt ourselves. Can you imagine a, a full cricket kit or, a, or a, a hockey goalie kit for swimming? Now, I don't think that's going to work so well if you, the drag and the, perhaps the weight of that as well. Maybe swimming clothing and uh, wearing our, our swimming costumes as we go and play uh, some other sport, for example, rugby or we play cricket, might not work so well. I think cricket, we might get very sunburnt if we were to do that. The reality is we, we wear the appropriate clothing because it's more effective to do that sport in clothing that's designed for that sport. Now with that in mind, I believe that, that this lines up with our daily living out of our Christian life. Friends, we need to clothe ourselves appropriately for our daily lives as Christians, as the children of God. Our reading today helps us understand this when the, the Apostle Paul brings his letter to the church at Ephesus to a close. And he does, does this by, by imparting a last word of wisdom and teaching to the Christian converts in Ephesus. And I believe to us today as well. As he shares these words from the message version, he says, and that about wraps it up. God is strong and, and he wants you strong. The NIV equivalent of that says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So friends, as I, as I read these sentences, particularly the one from the message, and that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. It raises two questions for me. The first question is, is why? And the second is how? And I want to spend some time taking a look at those two questions, the, the why and the how of taking a look at, at God wanting to make you strong. In our reading, we, we hear these words as the, the Apostle of Paul shares them with us. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil 
in the heavenly realms. Friends, the Apostle Paul tells us that, that for us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, we need to put on the full armor of God. Now, I don't know if you can imagine with me that the Apostle Paul, as he writes this letter, isn't a free man. He's, he's actually under house arrest. And I can imagine him looking at the, at the gate or the door, or perhaps even out the window, at the Roman guards that were, were established outside of, his, outside of his door and outside of his gate. He was under house arrest for, for sharing his faith and being a bit of a troublemaker as they saw him in the Air Roman Empire that day. And... He would have looked at those Roman guards and, and what they, how they were dressed and the equipment that they had dressed in for their function as soldiers. And as he does this, he likens the physical struggles and battles of that time to the daily living of the Christian life. We are told that our daily lives are a battle, not against other people, a physical battle but rather a spiritual battle of living out our, our Christian lives and, and walking in love with God. A, a fight against the spiritual forces that, that seek to separate us from the love of God and create doubt and fear in our lives. Friends, perhaps you, you know what I'm talking about. The closer to God you draw, the harder the devil seeks to separate you from God. I don't know if you know the temptations and the distractions and other disruptions that, that the evil one brings in between us and, and that love of God. Perhaps doubts and confusions and, and other things and those temptations. Perhaps this is an intention and an invitation to examine how we have been knocked off course in our relationship with God. Because God wants us to be growing and, and healthy in a loving relationship with God. A God who accepts us as we are and has paid the price, the full price for all of our sins, for all people's sins. But God asks that we confess and we repent. So, so perhaps the invitation is, is to confess the sin in our lives. In other words, to acknowledge that, that we have sin in our lives. Those things that, that have come between God and us. Those things that, that the evil one has brought and, and tripped us up with. Those things that have separated and, and, and broken relationship with God and others. Let us acknowledge them and confess them. And as we do, turn away from them and back to God. So let us confess it and repent our sins so that we can come back to God in full relationship with God. So that we can be in that, that space of, of growing in the, in the knowledge that God is strong and he wants you strong. That we may be strong in the Lord and, and in his mighty power by living in deep relationship with God. So that's the why. But what about the how? Friends, the, the Apostle Paul tells us when he says, so take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. Friends, God has provided us with all we need so that we're able to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. But so often we become so self-reliant on ourselves that we miss being God-reliant. I want to say it again, friends, and if there's anything you take from the sermon today, it's that. We become so often self-reliant that we miss becoming God-reliant. We need to become reliant as the children of God. We need to realize that, that we can't do this Christian life by ourselves, that we need to live in daily relationship as we walk with God through life. I mean, we even pray in the Lord's Prayer, that part, give us this day our, our daily bread. In this case, bread means the essential things that, that we need to live out our daily lives. Uh, the Apostle Paul highlights this again in our reading from the Message Version, which reads as this. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. You hear that, friends? You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them 
You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Friends, we we need to live out our salvation. In other words, that relationship that we've entered with God. We need to, to live out our salvation with God's help and with God's equipping. We need to, to hear the truth, right, live out righteousness and in peace through the faith that, that we received through our salvation. And, and in our reading, we, we hear these words of righteousness, truth, peace, faithfulness, and salvation. In the New International Version, we, we hear about pieces of armor that, that we need to wear. And I, and I want to take a look at those very briefly today as we come and we take a look at what does it mean to live this out in our lives. Well, the Apostle Paul, as he, he takes a look at that Roman guard or, or the centurion standing outside his door or gate, he, he first he sees the belt buckled around his waist that holds up his breastplate and perhaps his sword is hanging on that, back, on that, on that belt. So we hear, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The belt of truth. Friends, we, we need to keep ourselves together with the truth of God. The only true source of truth. The truth that supports our lives and keeps us together is God's truth. We, we then hear about the breastplate that would have been tucked into that belt and perhaps around over the person's chest. The breastplate of righteousness in place. Friends, we, we need to keep our chest protected. In other words, we, we need to keep our hearts right with God. This is the source of our, of our Christian living. I don't know about you, but we've often sung songs alike. We, uh, we change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. We sing songs about changing our heart, bring us back to the heart of worship, and many other songs around around the heart, because we know that that it is there that we find the righteousness. We invite Jesus to to come into our heart, and the Holy Spirit to live in our heart. We we speak these words, but but it's because. In that, there's language about protecting and, and living. Now, I don't know about you, but, but if my heart was to stop, I would die. Your heart would stop, you would die. So we need to, to protect our hearts, both physically as well as spiritually. As we, we sing songs like Change My Heart, O oh God, we're asking God to bring out the best qualities of God, to, to change us so that we become more like Jesus in living in the righteousness that God has made possible for us through the blood of Jesus shed to pay the price for your sin and for my sin. So we need to live in the righteousness that, that comes from God, that is found in our hearts, in our affections, in our emotions. So, so with that in mind, we, we come to the place where we need to, to hear about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. But that's protecting our upper torso. What, what about our feet? In verse 15, we read, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Friends, we need to be ready to live out the gospel teachings of Jesus. We find them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus teaches us what it means to be the children of God. We need, we need to come in peace and be peacemakers as we follow the example of the Prince of Peace. The one who, who helps us understand. And, and as we get these teachings from Jesus, we need to walk and live them out in our daily lives. We need to walk in confidence and overcome the doubts, worries, confusions that the devil uses to distract us from God and, and God's will for our lives. By standing firm on, on the teachings that we receive from Jesus. What Jesus tells us, what, what God through Jesus, God the Son, teaches us to live them out. Our reading goes on in verse 16. It says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Friends, we, we need to live by faith. We need to live in faith and live out our faith in God as we live in faith. In other words, believing that, that God is with us. God loves us. And we receive that salvation through faith, placing our confidence, our hope in God. 
And through that, we're able to overcome all doubts and distractions that the, that the evil one sends our way. Because we can, we can hold that shield of faith. We can live in that, that deep relationship with God as, as those fly, fiery arrows come and we can catch them on that shield. Because it's in faith that we live and God was with us as we live out our faith as well. Our reading goes on in verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation. Friends, we, we need to protect our minds against the deception and the evil tricks of the devil. We need to keep our minds focused on Jesus, giving God our affection and attention. And we do this, friends, by, by using the sword which is the, the, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We, we use the Holy Bible and God's Word to us, not just reading it, but, but getting it into us so that we are able to, to respond and to, to fend off the attacks that come by knowing the truth and by living it, but also by knowing with certainty what God has said. And we can use that as, as a weapon in our hands in order to, to defend ourselves. Friends, in all this armor, we protect and we live out our relationship with God. We live out the great commandment that Jesus gave us when he said that we need to love the Lord our God with all of our heart. Remember the breastplate in place? Our minds, the helmet of salvation. Our soul, the, the belt of truth around our waist. And our, our strength as we protect our entire body with a, with a shield of faith. So friends, we need to live out our relationship with God. As I bring this sermon to a close, uh, I want to say that we need to live out our Christian lives in constant relationship with God by reading God's word and in prayer. Our reading closes with these words, and I want you to hear them, friends. It reads as follows. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Do you notice the way Eugene Peterson puts this, friends? This ongoing warfare. Not a, not a once-off weekend battle, but, but an ongoing struggle that we fight against the spiritual powers and principalities that are spoken about as we fight against the evil and against the devil in this space. And we're told, pray hard and long. Pray, pray for our brothers and our sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that you'll not fall behind or have dropouts. Friends, we need to live our lives in daily relationship with God. Prepared and dressed in our Christian armor, in our Christian virtues, in our, in our faith. In order to live out our lives dressed spiritually for all that we'll encounter dressed in the finest that, that God has given us to live out our lives in faith as the children of God. Remember the, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the word of God. So friends, as I close, I want to invite you this week to, to spend time with God. I want to invite you to get into to God's Word and spend time reading God's Word. Not just to, to get through reading, but, but to allow it to become part of you. Maybe take a, a few passages and, and read them in order to, to, to actually grasp what's saying. Maybe take this passage from, from Ephesians 6, 10 to 20 and, and reflect on this passage of Scripture. Spend time in prayer and ask God, how is my, my Christian clothing doing? Am I dressed appropriately or am I missing some parts of, of my Christian clothing that we need to have in space? How am I, I doing with the belt of truth? How is my truth? Has lies crept in there? Am I relying on, on Jesus' truth, who is the way, the truth, and the life, according to John 14.8? What about the breastplate of righteousness? Am I seeking to live a righteous life? Live out how God has called me and God has taught me. What about the shoes of the gospel of peace? Am I living out those gospel teachings and teaching them as, and living them out as I walk and being a peacemaker in the spaces I find myself? What about the helmet of salvation? Am I protecting my mind from the distractions that come my way? Protecting my salvation so that I don't fall away from God. The shield of faith as we, we live in faith with God. And the sword, which is the word of God, to be able to use 
and be used as we defend ourselves as well. So I want to invite you to, to examine that. Maybe just use the list that's found in Ephesians 6, 10 to 20 and spend some time in prayer and ask God to help you grow in those areas as we, we seek to, to strive on towards Christian perfection as brothers and sisters in Christ, as we seek to live out our daily lives in relationship to God and with one another as well. With that in mind, let us come and pray. Almighty God, you are always with us and you are a loving God. A God who, who has given us all that we need in order to live out our Christian walk and life with you. So strengthen us, we pray, for life with you. Strengthen us to walk with you, Father, in truth, in righteousness, in peace, in salvation, in faith, and in the Spirit. Strengthen us, we pray, to live this out and to make a part of who we are. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Help us to know what to do and to take from the sermon and put it in practice in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word of God today, we sing together the stand. And I want to invite you to lift up your hearts as we respond to God and what God has done and continues to do in our lives as he continues to clothe us as the children of God. Friends, as we come to an end of our time of e-service today, thank you for joining us. I'm glad that we've been able to gather together as the children of God as we've come together through this our e-service as well. And I look forward to joining with you next week as we continue our journey through both our e-service and our in-person worship services as well. Friends, just a reminder that I am here for any pastoral care needs that you may have. Simply reach out. My contact details are found within the, the details of our video and in our notices. Simply reach out and I'll be able to care for you partially as I'm able. Let me know. I'm here for you, friends. 
besides that, have a blessed week and look forward to connecting with you next week as well. As we close our time together, we, we share with one another the blessing known as the benediction. And I want to invite you to, to bless the people if there's anyone there with you online as well as we share this benediction, as we, we bless each other as we go into the week that lies ahead. We say these words together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe, and know that God is with you both now and always. Amen.